Good evening. This is the Livingston County Board of Commissioners. Today is July 22, 2024 at 6 p.m. It's our monthly meeting for July. I'm calling the meeting to order and I see that our Zoom is functioning. Uh, we'll start with a moment of prayer by Commissioner Smith. To bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day to do the work of your people. You've given us charge of them and, their, and as stewards of their resources. Help us to be wise, help us to be brave, and bless us, bless this meeting, and bless the people of Livingston County. Amen. 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 Would you all stand kindly for the Pledge of Allegiance? Remove your hats. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> May we have a roll call, please. Commissioner Dreck. Here. Commissioner Helzerman. Here. Commissioner Domus. Here. Commissioner Sample. Here. Commissioner Nakagiri. Here. Commissioner Deaton. Here. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Fiani. Here. Commissioner Gross. Here. Forum is present. Thank you kindly. Next on our agenda is item number five, approval of agenda. So move Deaton. Second sample. Moved by Deaton, second by sample. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Domus, you're recognized. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would uh, ask that we remove the two of the uh, issues on the agenda, the one referring to the presentation by Brighton Hospital, and then the closed session at the end of the uh, meeting. Those would be, for the record, 11 sub A and 15. Does everyone understand the uh, motion? If so, all those by voice vote, kindly say aye if you're in support. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Any opposed? The, uh, uh, the agenda is hereby amended, removing 11A and removing 15. Item number six. Now we go back, excuse me. Now we go back and we uh, approve the amended, amended agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the amended? So moved. I'm hearing. I had that by Commissioner Deaton, seconded by Commissioner Sample. Thank you. Okay. We're voting on that one then, the mm -hmm. amended. All those voice vote, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Number six on the meeting agenda. <clears throat> we have 6A, correspondence from Crawford County, 6B, correspondence from Eaton County, and correspondence C from Genesee County. Can I get a motion on all three? Motion to receive and place on file all correspondence. Second, Deaton. Moved by Fiani, seconded by Deaton. All those in favor of placing on file, kindly say aye in a voice vote. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nine to zero, that passes also. We are at item number seven A, that is an employee recognition matter. Would Kathy Rosenberg and Director Felposh please come forward? This is a certificate of recognition proudly presented to Kathy Rosenberg. Excuse me, Commissioner, we cannot hear you on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. The Livingston County Board of Commissioners acknowledges their appreciation to Kathy Rosen Rosenberg for, that's a hard last name for me. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> for 32 years of service, devoted to the county's emergency medical services department. Throughout her career, 
Kathy has managed EMS front office expertly and truly became the heart of the organization. She has been the glue that's, been, that's kept everything and everyone together. Her tireless work ethic and commitment to providing top tier service to those who serve has been invaluable and inspiring. Her impact at Livingston County reached to beyond her office because of her calming presence and problem solving abilities. She earned the respect of everyone she worked with and provided them with the sense that their work was incredibly vital. Due to her unconditional support of the EMS department, she was recognized with the Star of Life Award at the Michigan State Capitol. It's a fact that our community has been a safer and healthier place because of Kathy's contributions. Therefore, let it be known that the Livingston County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes and expresses their deepest appreciation to Kathy Rosenberg for her dedication to keeping EMS running like a well-oiled machine for the last 32 years. The management system, the management systems you have put in place and your lasting sense of teamwork will continue to make a positive impact for residents and county employees for years to come. Dated today's date, signed by Board of Commissioners. Kathy, congratulations. A few thousand words from the director. <laughs> Everybody that knows me knows I don't have a few thousand words. Um, I've only had the privilege of working with Kathy for the last four years, but the words on there are extremely true. Um, nothing comes in and out of the EMS office without Kathy touching it somehow. And she has been the glue that's held this department together through a lot of really rough times. So I can't thank Kathy enough for everything she's done. And y'all didn't come here to listen to me, so have a great night. <laughs> You're allowed to speak. Oh. oh. You're allowed. I don't have anything to say other than thank you for accepting me into the county for all these years. Aww. Aww. Um, ever come up for... no, oh, yeah. Yeah. Please, Kathy, yeah. back up. Yeah. Come on up here. It, this is no talking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to fit? I'm so tall. <laughs> okay. Go. Next item on the agenda is number eight, call to the public. At the beginning, we have a three minute max call to the public. If you haven't already turned in a card, please do so to our clerk. She will call you by name. And we also need your place of residence. And we ask that you be seated and comfortable at the table near a microphone. Please. Reverend Charles R. Burroughs from Fowlerville, followed by Zach from Howell or Genoa. And Zach, I'm sorry, I'm having a difficult time with your last name. Joker. Is that? Okay. Yokers. When you're seated and comfortable, you may begin. Thank you. I appreciate the time. I felt that it was 
important that some words be said that might explain the background of someone that works very hard, not just in the community, but in the state. Roger Deaton. Roger Deaton has been given the honor of being a veteran of the year. Roger Deaton has supported veterans in this state for some 30 years. He has gone above and beyond helping not just veterans, but those of us in the community that are in need that may fall down at times. We all know the hard times with this economy that everybody goes through. And he's the man that calls and says, are you okay? While he's just left a veteran's post that has burnt down and he's on the way to see somebody else who may be a little bit invalid. And he calls you and says, if you need something, let me know, I will be there. There was a void in the community. I'm a veteran. I'm a Vietnam vet, and it needs to be recognized what he has done for vets. Not only has he grown up through the ranks of helping and being arbiters at posts, but when the call went out in Brighton that there was a void, he says, I'm gonna see what I can do to fill that void for vets. He's provided a home for a ragtag group of guys that had fallen between the cracks and weren't being recognized and were a bit lost. He called me six months ago, six, seven months ago, and said, hey, this is what I've been working on for the last year, not the last few days, the last year to put together. It's falling apart, fell down. Yes, Roger, I know about that. Can you help me? What do you need? I will never turn him down because of the work that I see him doing. Try and catch up with the man on a Sunday morning. It's not going to happen. He's in church. Try and get a hold of him when he's in Bible study. It ain't going to happen. He's a religious man. I respect that. I respect his priorities. The same thing he does for vets, he does here in the community and it's not recognized enough. I know because of when he said, do you know of others? Oh boy, do I. He says, do you think that they would come? I called him. I said, hey guys, Roger has provided a new home for us. Let's go check it out. Thank you, sir. You're, you're just a little bit over. But th Thank that's you. what I had to say. Let's go check it out. And okay. it's been wonderful. And I'm grateful. Thank you, sir. Zach from Howell, Genoa Township. Zach, when you're seated and comfortable, tell us your last name and then uh, that your timer start. My last name is Jokers. Got it. Thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read from my phone. I hope you guys understand. So, ladies and gentlemen, the board and members of the community. My name is Zach Jokers, and I'm a resident of District 6 in Genoa Township. Today is both an honor and a privilege to be before you in unwavering support of my friend Roger Deaton and his re-election as Livingston County, to, <clears throat> excuse me, Livingston County District 6 Commissioner. Roger is not only a dedicated public servant, but also a dedicated, uh, decorated veteran, friend, and mentor to me and many others. His life is a testament to commitment, honor, and service. Under Roger's exemplary, exemplary leadership, our township has seen significant advancements in local infrastructure, economic development, and community well-being. His unparalleled dedication has been the driving force behind these transformations. Roger has faced every challenge with steadfast resolve, always prioritizing the needs and voices of the residents. As a veteran, Roger embodies the principles of duty, courage, and sacrifice. These qualities have been the foundation of his tenure as our District 6 Commissioner. He has tire tirelessly advocated for all residents, ensuring that every concern is heard and addressed. 
Roger's strategic vision and decisive actions have consistently propelled our community forward. Voting against Roger would be turning away from the progress and values he has passionately upheld. It would mean ignoring the countless hours he has devoted to making District 6 a place of prosperity, safety, and unity. Roger's reelection is not merely a continuation of his work, it's a reaffirmation of our collective, <clears throat> excuse me, our collective commitment to a brighter future. The stakes are high and the choice is clear. Commissioner Roger Deaton is the leader we need. One who has proven time and again, he will fight for us, he will stand for us, and he will lead us towards continued success. Let us demonstrate our unwavering support for Commissioner Deaton and ensure his rightful reelection as District 6 Commissioner. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Doug Elgin, Candy Township, followed by Lauren Petrel from Howell. I think the applause cut into the, your first announcement of who should come out. Doug Helzerman, Handy Township, followed by Lauren Petrel. Commissioner, Commissioner, you don't have to go to the table if you choose not to. You have a choice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Doug Helserman from Hannity Township. Uh, I, uh, with uh, the recent Republican uh, convention and the upcoming Democrat convention. Commissioner Helserman, you are having a hard time hearing you. I don't know if the mic is off or you're not speaking into it, but if you could try to speak into it, that'd be great. Mike. Speak close to the mic. Am I too close to the mic? No, not close. Not close enough. My goodness. That's better. Thank <laughs> okay. You. I I thought it was I I thought I was speaking loud. I I apologize. Anyways, <clears throat> with the uh, Republican convention uh, that just happened, the Democrat convention, uh, I read scripture uh, at least some every day, and this these verses came to me, and uh, I thought they were fitting. This is the apostle Peter speaking to an errant Christian. And he said, Oh, full of subtlety, all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou evil of all righteousness, thou wilt not cease to prefer the right ways of the Lord. That was said to a Christian. Okay. <clears throat> but I am thinking that these uh, principles should be applied to, uh, to our body politic. Uh, we need to make sure that, that we do not use subtle words, that we're not for mischief, that we're not a liar, that the devil's, the child of the devil means that you are like your father and the, the devil is a liar. The only thing that he can do is lie. Even when he says things that are factually true, he says it with just a little twist to make the conclusion a lie. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, we need to look out for people that are enemy of what's right. We need to look out for people who, who twist uh, what's natural uh, and pervert the things that are uh, are not right. The Bible is not a political book. It is not Republican or Democrat. It is not left or right. It is what I would say up or down. The up meaning truth and good. The down being lies and evil. <clears throat> uh, as you, uh, this is my challenge to each of you and to myself, as you compare uh, the two parties' conventions, uh, may God give you and us insight so that we know uh, what is the truth. Because the Bible says, uh, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Um, thank you. Thank you. Lauren Petrel from Howell, followed by Rob Rodriguez Palazzari. It's Lauren Petrel. Petrel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for having me here today and this evening. Um, it really is quite an honor 
to be sitting here in front of each of you and all of you. I kind of feel like I should be standing. I did not repair a written remark, but um, I can tell you that in the grand scheme of things, I'm not that important. I'm important to my father in heaven. I'm important to my friends and my family who loves me, but I'm just one of many fish. I take my dedication to my country, however, very seriously. I'm a veteran of the Marine Corps. I have four children, two grown. I'm a catechist. Um, and I work in a church and I'm a teacher and that's what I do. And no matter how hard life is, I try to do good. I try to do well. I've campaigned for a few people on this board and I'm just so proud of you, each and every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you for your failings that you've learned from. Thank you for your successes. And um, on behalf of, of my friend, Roger Deaton, I would like to say that, that I think this is the greatest country in the world and Livingston County has been home to me for a while. The Revolutionary War, there was a ship called the Bonham Richard. It was named after Benjamin Franklin by Captain John Paul Jones. And he had a horrible head injury and he was wounded. And when the British came aboard to take him away, they said, do you have any last words? And he said, yeah, I have not yet begun to fight. That's you, you're Captain John Paul Jones. You've done so much good in, in this county and for families and I see it. And while I'm not that important, I love you and I love this country. God bless the United States and Trump 2024, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Rodriguez Palazzari from Brighton, Michigan, followed by Bill Ryder. Can everybody hear me okay? okay. Commissioners, I come before you tonight as Rob Rodriguez Palazzari, Livingston County resident and voter not as part of any organization that I currently am in or have been in before. I'm a solid Republican. I believe in Republican values. I believe in less government, lower taxes, and self-responsibility. For almost two years, I've observed this board make decisions on behalf of the country, or I'm sorry, the county. And I'll say that as a Republican, I'm incredibly proud of each and every one of you. In every vote, you've taken seriously your responsibility to the taxpayers of this county. You've governed wisely, not to throw around our money foolishly or use it on unsustainable programs. During the last couple of months, I've unfortunately watched and listened to challengers attempt to dismerge some of my uh, colleagues that I know very, very well. And these allegations I just find untrue. And that's why I'm here today. As a Republican leader, I'm discouraged on the behavior of my fellow Republicans talking ill of each other instead of talking what is wonderful about them. That's the actual exchange that we have in this democracy that we live in. We're supposed to be talking about what we do best. That's what I challenge each and every one of my Republican brothers and sisters to do. To those commissioners here that are being challenged right now, Wes, Nakagari, I thank you for being a taxpayer's watchdog. I know of nobody who has dug in deeper and uncovered more truths than you have, point blank. Um, I always know that I can count on you for fiscal responsibility and to find that needle in a haystack that we need to be looking at as far as uh, our county is concerned. Commissioner Roger Deaton, for your deep commitment to the country, especially to our veterans, I, I personally watched multiple instances where you put our vets first above yourself. I, I know that you have the dedication well being, uh, well being of our vets, and, and it's very humbling to watch all the efforts that you put forward. Don't cry. I'm just Please. saying this is, this is a big deal. <laughs> and we appreciate your efforts 
And also, let's not forget public safety. You've done a lot for public safety, too. And for you, Commissioner Drake, your incredible attention to detail, I know of nobody else that is so incredible on detail. You'll find a single point in a 100-page poison pill contract that we need to review. And it's a good thing you are the way that you are. Otherwise, Livingston County wouldn't be in the position that they're in. And to the rest of you commissioners, thank you very much for everything that you do every day for us. God bless you all. Bill Ryber from Genoa Township, followed by Anna Marie Rodriguez Palazzari. Test, test, test. Uh, first of all, I watched the Republican National Convention. Wes, I got to say, I was looking for a fluorescent hat or flashing <laughs> something. Uh, anyways, it was a great convention. Uh, and thank you uh, to the Board of Commissioners for all that you do. Our country is in excellent shape due to your fiscal, our county in excellent shape due to your fiscal responsibility and experience in problem solving. Tonight, I specifically want to give a shout out to Roger Deaton for all his hard work for our veterans community, not only in Livingston County, but across the state of Michigan. <clears throat> I have recently seen Commissioner Deaton's opponents attack on his veteran service. On a side note, it's very interesting that this opponent suddenly has found concerns for veterans that she has not demonstrated in the past. I'd like to highlight just a few of Commissioner Deaton's efforts. He volunteers his time to the Livingston County Veterans Court, mentoring veterans who have been incarcerated. He works with them on a four-step program to help them get off and stay off drugs and alcohol. He spends 15 hours a week on average volunteering to assist his fellow veterans. Roger served on the committee too uh, and helped raise funds for the Howell Veteran Memorial Monument. He's co-hosted and co-sponsored a send-off breakfast for the American Legion's Boys State Program. He started and currently serves as the director of the American Legion Riders in Brighton. He started the public service awards in the Brighton American Legion to recognize firefighters, police, and teachers. He has worked with American legions around the state, helping them with lawsuits and membership issues. These are just a few of his efforts, and these are just the efforts for this year. He has been helping veterans and volunteering his time as a member and in various officer positions to numerous to mention for the past 33 years. Commissioner Deaton's longtime devotion to veterans recently earned him the American Legion's most prestigious award. He was named Michigan American Legion uh, Legionnaire for the year 2024. Thank you, Roger. I find it sickening <clears throat> that someone who has served the American Legion for the past 30 years could be so harshly and unfairly attacked by someone who has been a member for a whopping, I don't know, month, 30 days. His opponent has coincidentally decided to take an interest during a time when she is running for office. And when August 7th arrives, nobody will be surprised when her sudden interest fades. Commissioner Deaton, Commissioners, thank you for your service. Thank you for keeping Livingston County a great place to live. Anna Marie Rodriguez Palazzari from Brighton, followed by David Pickett. Hi, Commissioners. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you for all of your support um, and everything you're doing as president of 2A Patriot. I can't thank you enough, especially for your support with the constitutional county. That is absolutely amazing. And I hope more counties continue to follow in that path that you guys have, have started. I'm here because I have listened to some of the female challengers say that they should be voted in because they are women and mothers. And being a woman and a mother, I don't find that the qualifications for being on the board. They're great things. They're amazing. I love it. But it should be on the merits of what they can do and will do and have done for our county like you guys have. Not just that. If that's their passion, maybe the PTO is a great place for them to exercise it. But I really don't feel that this is the place, and I hope that the other voters also see that that is flawed logic for a reason to be in a position in an office like you guys have been. Thank you so much.
David Pickett from Howell, followed by Julia Zwang. Hello, guys. David Pickett from Howell, Michigan, voting member, District 6. I know that uh, first time ever being at one of these meetings, by the way, and uh, it was due to some different things I've heard and read. And I know that's very easy because I've been an elected official in the past in different organization to go out and say a lot of things and run for that position, criticize the current administration. And that's not leadership in my world, not at all. I wanna thank all of the commissioners, the leadership that you've all shown the last few years. That's what a current board is supposed to do. You're working as a team to help our community stay safe, keep our taxes low, and still providing great programs for all of us members. It's nice to see when you guys are communicating to each other, working your concerns out together, but at the end of the day, we benefit from that. And you guys put so much effort, so many hours into doing that for you just must love us is all I can say. And, I, and I'd like to point out as quite a few people going last like this, uh, they take a lot of the words that I've already prepared for Commissioner Deaton, my friend. He's worked tirelessly in so many different ways for not only the veterans, but all the broadband stuff. You, you, you talk about the schools, you talk about how many trips he goes and does with his own money, own time, mentoring the veterans. And I'm just glad and proud to be his friend. And I ask you to please support every one of these commissioners in the upcoming election so they continue with their job that they've been doing so efficiently. Thank you for your time, Joan. Julia Wang from Howell, followed by Joni Econom. Uh, hi. So I'm a little shaky, so don't mind. But um, get a little closer to the microphone. Oh, I go. would just like to point out to my stepfather, Roger. <laughs> um, I just want to say that even though if we go out of state or whatever. He's always going on, checking veterans. How are you? What are you doing? And normal people may work a nine to five shift, but Roger wakes up every morning at three in the morning to start working. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> Waking up at three in the morning to check how people are doing and work on his work. I just want to say thank you and I love you. <laughs> Tony Econom from Osceola Township, followed by Michelle Herbert. That's going to be a tough one to follow. <laughs> okay, so could we all have a moment? <laughs> um, I'm going to make this very short. I wish to thank each and every one of you. I am so proud to live in this county with you as our commissioners. Commissioner Smith, I understand you're not running. So I, I, I wish you all the best in whatever journey is next for you. For those of you that are currently running, I pray you retain these seats. I'm fortunate to have Wes as my commissioner. He's made me very proud. We've been out here since 1979. We've seen a lot of changes. This has been the best and it's yet to come. Thank you all. Before I leave, I'd like to thank our county our <laughs> county clerk. She's done a fabulous job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. fabulous. <laughs> Michelle Herbert from Genoa Township, followed by Stephanie Miklas. Good evening, commissioners. Um, I just wanted to come tonight to express my gratitude as well. We've been in a lot of fights over the last fighting for our community over the last four years, whether it's schools, you know, masking, whatever it's been, it's been a challenge. And um, you've been very supportive to stand up for people's individual rights. And I'm very grateful. And I am been made aware recently that a lot of you are, um, 
trying to help in the homeschool department because I know that's going to be coming under attack soon. So that that touches my heart and my family. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, just wanted to thank you all for all that you do and all the time that you put in. Very grateful. Thank you. Stephanie Miklos from Howell, followed by Colleen Quinn. I um, just want to say that um, I'm not really grateful of intermingling politics with religion. Um, I've really, I find it offensive too, given the number of lies I've heard from many of you. And the other thing is, um, you all invited Shane Trejo, um, a known white supremacist, to the Opera House in February. You've invited an evil into this county, and it's become evident when we have white supremacists demonstrating. It's been in all the local news channels, so I do not thank you for that whatsoever. I'm not a MAGA Trump cult member. I would never vote for a pack of lies. <laughs> oh, yeah, and here's another thing. I, you know, I spoke at the Constitutional County meeting. It's all recorded by Channel 7 News, interrupted by these idiots back here. And I'm not going to put up with it. It's my free speech right. It's my three minutes. Yeah, go ahead. Don't kick them out. Let them do what they want because they're all praising you up here. I find it reprehensible. You had a group of clowns. Some of them are gone now, but most of them are still there. And I'm allowed to call Shane Trejo a white supremacist based on his actions. And also law enforcement, yeah, they said they have their right to free speech. Well, thank God the library kicked him out because it's private property. You have invited evil into the county. And I'm not going to let your pistol packing people come here and threaten me because I have a different opinion. I tried to talk to them um, downstairs they all surrounded me no security no sheriff this did happen none of you will acknowledge it or even say anything to that effect and i don't expect you to here but no one ever reached out to say hey this shouldn't have happened we should have conducted our meetings like a normal uh commissioner's meeting however you mix this christian nationalism into stuff which has nothing to do with religion. You might as well call yourself an atheist if you're going to call Trumpism a religion. It's not. It's a way to try to control people. And I see it clearly. I'm sorry that other people don't. But, you know, just because you don't agree with 40% uh, of the people or probably way more in this county doesn't mean you don't represent us. And we are patriots. I, I tell you that. Karen. Oh, yeah, Karen. Good one. Colleen Quinn, Genoa Township, followed by Lisa Rosmanerwich. Good evening. I want to thank the board for all you have done for this county. And I want to echo many of the prior comments, except for the person that just preceded me. I don't agree with anything that was said. Um, you guys have had the courage to take unified and tough stands that protect our constitutional freedoms. And as a citizen, that is my main request of government, to honor the Constitution. Um, my direct commis commissioner, Roger Deaton, has been accessible and responsive to my concerns. His work with the veterans has been commendable and dis dis distinguished, sorry. And all the commissioners on this current board have just been outstanding. I can't thank you enough because, as um, I think it was Michelle said, we had some rocky years and we had some other commissioners and we had medical freedom issues. And now with this current board, it's been, it's been wonderful. So um, I'm also hoping that our local media will cover some of the your positive work and these positive comments because they seem to revel in covering the drama and so forth and the divisiveness and they over, over react to it, I guess. Um, I also appreciate your fiscal responsibility and I really hope the citizens of Livingston County reelect the incumbents that are running. Good luck to you, commissioner. And again, we are so fortunate. Thank you so much for all that you do.
Lisa Rosmarnowicz from Hamburg, followed by Janine Ayer. Good evening, commissioners. I, I came here to say thank you as well. And I, I just wanted to, to read, um, and you all know, and most people in this room hopefully know, that our founding fathers believed in the importance of religion and morality, including George Washington, Patrick Henry, and John Adams. Um, in fact, John Adams said that our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. So I, we're all, everyone who's here, you're here because we have the constitution. You're here, you can freely speak because you have the constitution. And I know you guys all swore an oath to the constitution. And I so appreciate the fact that you are upholding your oath that you took, supporting the constitution for our freedoms. I've been sitting in this room for the last four years and I am so proud of everything that you guys have done to support the people of this county, to maintain our conservative values, our family values, and our values of, of valuing freedom. And I just want to thank you, and I just pray that you all win your races. Thank you so much. Janine Iyer, Genoa Township, followed by Deb Dreck. Janine Ayer, resident of Genoa Township. This is my first time that I've been to the BOC meeting in several months. The reason is, is I have been very happy with how this board has conducted the business of the county. You have managed to add facilities, services, and personnel, and maintained and upgraded county offices without increasing residents' taxes. And in fact, you have lowered them. This is so helpful with the high inflation we're currently experiencing. This board, has members with finance and legal backgrounds, as well as business owners and experienced engineers. Most of you have had many years of public service and genuine care for this county and its residents. What I most appreciate about many of you is your connection, concern, and responsiveness to your constituents. I will cite some examples. In September of 2023, I contacted my commissioner, Roger Deaton, to consider a health freedom resolution that I had drafted. He and another two commissioners edited it and Roger talked to legal and the county health officer about it. Once the draft was ready, he brought it to the board's chair to put it on the agenda for discussion and the chair agreed. During discussion, the motion was made to put the resolution for a vote and th this current board unanimously passed that health freedom resolution. Roger was also instrumental in negotiating for the money that was necessary to continue to deliver broadband to our rural areas. Roger's persistence in these situations was important to delivering for Livingston residents. Another example, this is Jay Drick. Um, when the state of Michigan was offering money to the counties for COVID response, county residents, residents voiced concerns that the vast majority of the money was to be dedicated to COVID shots for kids. In response to our concerns, Commissioner and Attorney Jay Drick went through the state contract with a fine tooth comb. During discussion, he exposed all the strings and stipulations in the contract that would be detrimental to the county and its residents. When the vote for approval was made, our board rejected the resolution to approve these funds with their strings. Our kids are safe because of Jay Drick's analysis and commentary of the contract. During COVID, parents had concerns over the school quarantine policy of sending healthy kids home from school for several days if they had possibly been exposed to COVID. Commissioner West Nakagiri was a strong voice in opposition to this policy. In fact, at one board meeting, he arranged to have a Brighton school mom give a testimony regarding this destructive policy. West showed solidarity with moms in regard to this bad school policy, which put their kids behind. West also was instrumental in advocating and passing the formation of a health advisory board consisting of medical uh, professionals from our community so that their voices could be heard. Commissioners, I thank you each for your ex excellent um, service to this, um, to this county, and I hope and pray that you continue to do so in the coming um, years. Thank you. Deb Drick, City of Howell followed by Madeline Thomas. Good evening, commissioners. 
And I echo most of what I heard tonight. Thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, I'm here for a different reason. Um, it is obvious to me, having sat here week after week, that uh, the, the commissioners and the, and the administration and the departments wanted to improve employee culture. They spent good money, reasonable money, but good money on, an, on a survey to their employees. They sent the employees the surveys and they knew to get the best results that they had to promise the employee comments would only be shared with the supervisor. They did not promise that the employee's name wouldn't be shared or the employee's comments would be shared to anybody else, but it's only with the supervisor. Well, the last couple of months I've heard time and time again, you criticized because you wouldn't produce the comments in a FOIA. These people have pressured you to break your promise and release their comments, the employees' comments, for their political game. I will tell you, I don't start sentences off with this very, very rarely, if ever, but I have a master's degree in um, culture change leadership. And I will tell you that employee culture, changing employee culture, improving employee culture 101 is the word trust. And the employees have to trust, they have to, it relies 100% on trust. They have to trust that their, their um, leadership will keep their word. So they trusted you to keep your word to them that your comments, their comments would not be released to anyone other than their supervisor. And so during pressure and even threats of lawsuit, you all kept your promise to them. That tells everyone your word is good, that people can count on your word. That's important. Those who pressured and threatened you to break you, your word, those actions tell us their word is meaningless and that ought to be remembered by everybody. Thank you for everything you do and thank you for keeping your word. Madeline Thomas, Brighton Township. And that's the last card I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Ma'am, when you're seated and comfortable, you may begin. All right. Hi, commissioners. Thank you for having me. Uh, as usual, last in line, stuck in the traffic. But anyways, I just want to let you know that um, I'm, I think I speak for the majority when I say we, we like you guys. Um, you guys have gone the extra mile. I've been watching for the last couple of years and you're listening to what we're telling you. I mean, the resolutions about medical freedom, the resolution to not take the, the uh, state money to plot shot the kids. Um, there's another one I can't think of. There's several of them that, you, that you've all been working on. And I greatly appreciate it. I'm 100% behind the three commissioners running for reelection. I really appreciate your work, but I also appreciate the fact that you're not throwing money around like the people in Lansing and Washington, D.C. are. So, and I'm also appalled and disgusted that people would actually get up here and attack and call you names, like corrupted, corrupted, come on. I think we should grow up. So anyways, thank you for your time and I appreciate you and I'm 100% behind you. Have a great evening. <laughs> I have no further cards. No cards. Can we go to Zoom then? Yes, Commissioner. I have Thank you. iPad. If the person designated iPad would please come on screen and then tell us your name and your residence. Then you Hello have there. To talk. Go ahead. Hello, Commissioners. I'm Trisha Fessler from Heartland Township. I just want to say thank you for your service to our community. Um, also, for those that will stand with our, your constituents when it comes to the concerns so many of us had during COVID, by implementing ways to help re, um, not repeat the same mistakes in, uh, that was made in the past in the future. Um, I've had the privilege of sharing my concerns and personal experience with Commissioners Wes Nakagiri, Roger Deaton, and Nick Fiani over the last couple of years, and I appreciate you all caring enough to listen to me. I want to give a special thank you to my commissioner, Wes Nakagiri, 
for being instrumental in creating a new health advisory committee where medical professionals in our area are able to help the board make better informed decisions. We must be forward thinking during these uncertain times and creating this new committee is doing just that. Thank you to all of you, those of you who voted to approve this committee. And one last thing I would like to say is I started Heartland Voters, which represents many residents in, Heart in the Heartland area. Heartland Voters has endorsed West Nakagiri uh, for re-election as commissioner because of the wonderful job that he has done. I am excited along with many others to cast my vote for him again in the primary election. Thank you all for all that you've done for our community. God bless you all. Next, I have Denise O'Connell. Denise, can you hear us? I can, thank you. Hi, I'm Denise O'Connell. I'm from Heartland Township. And I just wanted to say, um, as you know, I've been very vocal over the years about the lack of attention to the SRS. That said, I want to sincerely thank the current Board of Commissioners for their help in creating the Health Advisory Board, the vote to not take the COVID response money from the state of Michigan with all of those strings attached. Wes Nakagari is my commissioner in District 4, and it deserves our vote on primary election day, August 6. Commissioner Nakagari is the budget hawk of the board. Commissioner De Deaton, the watchdog for our veterans. Commissioner Dreck, the watchman of the contracts that are brought before the board. Our cor current board of commissioners were the first in the state to declare our county a sanctuary for the U.S. Constitution and the Second Amendment. It was in wake of the state legislature passing red flag laws and other restrictive gun laws. I employ, implore the voters of Livingston County to vote for all our current commissioners and most especially those that have primary opponents. Trump 2024, thank you. Next, I have Mary Metallic. Mary, can you hear yes, us? Can we Mary. hear you? If yes, that's Mary Wetalic. And your residence? Okay, Mary Wetalic. I, I live in Green Oak Township. Thank you. Uh, you actually, begin. I wanted to speak. Oh, thank you. I wanted to speak about a few topics that were on the agenda. Um, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to witness this love fest. Uh, it was a little disgusting from my point of view, but that's okay. Um, actually, it was in regard to some of the correspondence. Um, I noticed that this was the second correspondence regarding the Michigan, uh, the conservation districts. Um, I have read that the budget now includes, it keeps the $3 million in ongoing funds, and also the technicians will remain within the conservation district. So just an update on that. I know somebody brought that up a couple of weeks ago as a concern, but I think the concern can be put to rest now. Uh, the other correspondence, which um, regards uh, Mich Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, um, uh, this is something that's close to me, so I was reading up on it, um, and it is of concern to me also, and I hope that we will look into it. Uh, there is a, a rule placed by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, and um, the, the rule is intended to mitigate conflicts of interest. Um, and so it is good that the Department of Health and Human Services look at this and try to make sure the rule is satisfied. However, the solution they came up with is overly complex. And uh, the Community Mental Health Association of Michigan has made suggestions for other solutions to satisfy this requirement, and those should be investigated. I don't know if you will be looking into it or not, or if somebody is looking at mental health. Uh, okay. So um, with my time I have left, <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it's, it's funny how that um, if we don't have this perfect board, 
then it would be catastrophic. Uh, somebody in a previous meeting said that uh, it would be the coming of the days of judgment. Um, <laughs> and uh, another said that the state of Michigan is being destroyed by the current administration. Uh, just to that point, um, there's many things going on in Michigan that I'm quite happy about, uh, that Michigan has removed the stranglehold on unions. Uh, for in our state so that they can more effectively bargain on behalf of their members. Uh, the state is removing barriers for individuals to tap into solar power. And lastly, the state is making an investment into our students by guaranteeing free tuition at community colleges. Many About certificates and degrees remaining. at community colleges lead to good paying jobs. And in regard to these uh, constitutional county, our sheriff is using the law to do what needs to be done. And that is take away guns from people who are an imminent threat to themselves or somebody else. It's a reasonable law and to go crazy makes no sense. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I have Cindy McNevich. Hello, commissioners. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, I don't know what I just witnessed it seemed like a campaign rally. Um, each and each of the individuals does have the freedom of speech to speak at the call of the public, but I have a feeling, and I I heard one of the commissioners say that this would be happening at the commissioner meeting today. So that's kind of organizing, and I don't think there should be any campaigning done at a public meeting like this. And um, in regards to the previous speaker, two speakers ago, about you um, not accepting the $150,000 grant for the health department, I just want the voters to know that right turn, turned around, the commissioners on this board voted to take that $150,000 out of the budget to do the same thing. Thank you. Next. I have Zoom. Steve W. Hello. Steve w. If you tell us where you tell us where you live, uh, you can your last name. You can begin. Sure, Mary Township. My last name is Williams. I am Steve Williams. I'm a little attendant person today, but it would have been entertaining. I am here to bring some actual facts to this discussion. One being that regardless of what certain commissioners say in their uh, in their publicity materials, budgets have to be balanced in Michigan by law. The county commission has to balance the budget. So that is not really something the commissioners can take credit for as if they're doing it and nobody else is. It's the law. And also they take credit for having the lowest millage rate in the state, which is great. I love that, except that there isn't a sitting commissioner on the board who had anything to do with establishing that millage rate. All they've done is not raise the millage rate, but then they have added some additional fees and things like that. So they can't take credit for that, but they do all the time. The other fact is the county lawsuit that's being uh, waged against the board by the courts is going to cost us all tens of thousands of dollars. And that should never come to should never come to happen. That if the board was doing their job, we would not have this lawsuit. I don't know why this is so hard to understand. The longer it goes on, the longer it's going to cost us. And then a FOIA lawsuit will cost us even more. And it doesn't matter if you all made a, a, a promise, which you didn't really make anyway, but uh, it's still an illegal promise. An illegal promise cannot be kept. And if you're sued, then we're going to have to pay. And then you're going to have to pay whoever sues the county for that. Um, the board is breaking its own rules. That is a fact. You are not supposed to address people during the call of the public. You are not supposed to wait until after people who spoke during the call to the public are gone and then attack them during a board meeting. You are not supposed to use board meetings for campaign event, events, as happened a couple of weeks ago when Bob Bazak came in and used it as a campaign event for him and two other commissioners. You're using county public property to advance somebody's political career. And you're holding all the staff members hostage. I would be surprised if the Democrats don't actually file a complaint with the Secretary of State for that. And, uh, you know, the unions may decide to complain about that as well, because you're keeping these people from coming home 
and yet forcing them to attend a political rally for your friends. Oh, what else do we have? Now, in terms of calling names, in terms of untruths, there is no reason why I can't come before the board and call you out for lying. And, you know, uh, we can't name commissioners, but I have a, a daughter who's running for the board. You and, have 15 seconds remaining. And whose opponent said she doesn't live where she lives, that she's not a legal resident of the district, which is blatantly false, as are many of the accusations being made by the members of the audience who have addressed the board tonight. So facts are stubborn things. I wish you would stick with the facts instead of lying so much. Any further Zoom? Any further I Zoom? See, I do not see any, Commissioner. Okay. The uh, chair uh, will now address as call to the public. I have that right to be the last person to speak. I've sat here quietly week after week, listening to a litany of allegations, bogus issues about three commissioners running for reelection. I've looked the three challengers and their husband and their father and their friends in the eye from the seat as they've attempted time and time to discredit our good works, and I've never responded until now. The county did not spend the alleged $58,000 on an employee survey. The county spent 19,000. That's roughly a third, and it was purposely inflammatory by the speaker. The board has not been punished by SEMCOG by receiving zero dollars for Livingston County Roads at the Road Commission. In fact, for 2024, they expect to receive 11 million from SEMCOD. The board has not closed the courts. We've not defunded the courts. We've not starved the courts. The 2024 budget approved for the courts was an increase of 1.3 million. And that's the constitution talking. We cannot tell them how to spend it. They cannot tell us how much. For the record, I've never stolen or vandalized an opponent's political sign in my life. And I've had lots of campaigns. I find it incredible the woman who accused me of serving only to go to higher office is married to an ex-commissioner who actually attempted to do that, not once, but twice. And... I hear tonight that we should not take credit in our postcards for having uh, the lowest uh, millage rate. But I have a postcard from an ex-commissioner that's very tall that took credit a long time ago when he was running for commissioner also. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. We go now after a call to the public to item number nine, approval of minutes. We have 9A, meeting minutes dated June 24, 2024. 9B, closed session minutes dated June 24, 2024. And 9C, meeting minutes dated July 8, 2024. Can I get a motion on A through C? Motion. Gross. Second sample. Moved by Commissioner Gross, seconded by Commissioner Sample. Voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Nine to zero. It's approved unanimous. Item number 10 would be where we talk about tabled items from previous meetings. And are, there are none, unless anybody wishes to remind me. Seeing none, zero. We're on to number 11, which is uh, on the, on the uh, agenda still. Does anybody else have a report that they might like to give to the commission tonight by a commissioner? Seeing none, we'll proceed on to number 12, resolutions for consideration. 12A reads 2024-07-089. It's a resolution approving an appointment to the Livingston County Community Corrections Advisory Board 
and it's brought to us by the Board of Commissioners. It's page 20 on your agenda. Sarah Applegate is the proposer. Do we need further elucidation by Sarah or are we ready to vote? I'm ready. Motion to approve the resolution. Second, Deaton. Thank you for that. Any wish for discussion, any wish for analysis or questioning? Seeing none, we'll go to voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Nine to zero is what I've heard. We're at 12B. It's number 2024-07-090. It's a resolution approving the 2023 deficit elimination plan brought to us by our competent treasurer, Jennifer Nash, who has explained why this is merely a housekeeping event. May I get a motion? So I'll move, move Halsman. I hear both Helzerman and Deaton as the movers and shakers. I'll move a second then. Thank you. Madam, Madam Clerk, are you set? Commissioner Helzerman moved. Commissioner Deaton seconded. Thank you. We have a good record. Does anyone need further elucidation, questions, or comment? Seeing none, we'll go to voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Nine to zero passes. We're on to 12C. It's number 2024-07-091. It's a resolution to authorize a second quarter budget amendment to the fiscal year 2024 budget. It's brought to us by Fiscal Services and Ms. Arbanis, and we talked about this extensively at FAM. Does anybody wish any further question, further analysis, comment, or question? Motion to approve the resolution. Thank Support you. Gross. Been a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion desired? Seeing none, it's a roll call vote, kindly. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Drick. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. And Commissioner Smith. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We're on to 12 letter sub D. It's number 2024-07-092. It's a resolution authorizing submission of the fiscal year 2025 child care fund budget to the state of Michigan. It's brought to us by juvenile court, the proponents, Debbie Shaw, and we've discussed in earlier committee. Move the motion. resolution. Support Deaton. Nakagiri motion, support by Deaton. <clears throat> Any questions, comments, or need for further uh, input? Commissioner Nakagiri, you have yeah. the floor. Um, I have a couple of comments just for clarification. So I, I had concerns in committee regarding the, um, uh, the second B at further resolved, uh, where they had a listing of all the positions that it impacted. I am... I no longer have those concerns. Uh, um, the resolution speaks about uh, positions that are already in place and um, the proportion of the salary for each of these positions that will be paid by the general fund versus the child care fund uh, currently and then uh, proposed. It's a, uh, actually a very favorable to our uh, budget. Um, uh, our finance officer, um, Cindy Arbanis said, had reached out to the courts and have concluded it is net favorable to the general fund for approximately $410,000 a year. Um, there is uh, uh, a question that I uh, raised with regards to, uh, as an example, the uh, first position in that uh, resolution is an intake hearing officer referee. To, uh, today, it's 100% general fund, 0% child care fund. Um, and pr it's proposed it'll be just the opposite, zero general fund, 100% child care fund. That's a very favorable thing. So just, just uh, to share one last tidbit, um, the child care fund uh, will, so when we say it's going to go, uh, the salary and benefits are going to be paid 100% by child care fund, uh, I just want to make it clear that that is actually 75% because we uh, we get uh, reimbursed from the state of Michigan at 75%. We have to pay 25%, but it's still a great deal. And uh, I just wanted to share that information. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Any further comment, analysis, question, or? Seeing none, another roll call vote, please. 
Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. And Commissioner Sample. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We're at 12 E on tonight's agenda. It's number 2024-07-093. It's a resolution authorizing transmission of the approved 2025 to 2030 County Capital Improvement Plan to the Livingston County Board of Commissioners by the Planning Department. May I get a motion? So move, Gross. Second, oh. Fiani. Motion by Gross, second by Fiani. Any further comment? Chair recognizes Commissioner Smith. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to uh, express my gratitude to Scott Barb and Rob and the Planning Department. This is a uh, it's a significant document for the county. There's an enormous amount of work goes in there. We have some uh, uh, volunteers on this board. Uh, the Chair Bill Anderson uh, has given a, a lifetime of service to this county, quite frankly. And I just want to thank them all. They do a, a really wonderful job. And uh, want to commend them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I believe everyone on the board also echoes those sentiments. Commissioner Smith, thank you for bringing them forward. Any further? This is a voice vote. All those in favor of 12E, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? 9-0 is what I've heard. 12F is number 2024-07-094. It's a resolution authorizing the Sheriff's Office and the County of Livingston to apply for the United States Department of Justice Office of Community-Oriented Community Policing Services Fiscal Year 24 Safer Outcomes, Enhancing De-Escalation and Crisis Response Training for Law Enforcement Program Grant. So, the resolution, Mr. Chair. Second sample. Moved by Commissioner Domus, seconded by Commissioner Sample. It's a Sheriff Department resolution. Does anyone wish to uh, proceed with questions, analysis, comment, or have any further input from the Sheriff? Seeing none, then we'll move to voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign, nine to zero is 12F is approved. We are at 12G. It's, a, it's numbered 2024-07-095. It's a resolution authorizing the purchase of onboard media players for Let's Vehicles from Mesa Electronics, Inc., brought to us by Let's, and the proponent is our director, Greg Kellogg. It was discussed earlier in FAM. Does anyone need uh, further question input? So move. Second. Commissioner Deaton and Commissioner Fiani picked up the fumble by myself. Appreciate that. Any further discussion or input? This is a roll call vote. Thank Commissioner, you. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. And Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We're on to uh, 12H, number 2024-07-096. It's a resolution approving updated LETS, L-E-T-S, LETS drug and alcohol policy brought to us by the Let's and our good friend, Greg Kellogg, the director there. Can I get a motion? Move, Halserman. Support, Gross. Motion by Halserman, support by Commissioner Gross. Anyone wishes a presentation? Anyone wishes questions, comment, analysis? Seeing none, we'll move to oral roll call, excuse me, oral voice vote. All those in favor, kindly say aye. 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 Nine to zero. The voice vote passes 12H. We're at uh, 12 letter I. It's number 2024-07-097. 
It's a resolution authorizing an agreement for project management services for the renovation of the health department brought to us by facility services. Can I get a motion? Move, Halserman. Support Deaton. Moved by Commissioner Halserman, support by Commissioner Deaton. Any questions, mm -hmm. any analysis, any need for presentation? It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halserman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. And Commissioner Gross. Yes. Motion carries. We're on to 12 small letter J. It's number 2024-07-098. It's a resolution authorizing the addition of three full-time employees in the emergency medical services uh, brought to us by Director David Feldposch. Commissioner Domus has made a motion to move it. Is there a second? Support Deaton. Support by Commissioner Deaton. It was uh, discussed at FAM and lower committees. Anyone wishing further presentation, further question or analysis? Seeing none, it's a roll call vote, kindly. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. And Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. We are at 12 small letter K. It's number 2024-07-099. It's a resolution to realign categories within the Folloville EMS base project brought to us by Emergency Medical Services and Director Felposh. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve the resolution with the title being amended to read, resolution to realign budget categories within the Folloville EMS base project and to authorize purchasing a generator from Michigan Electrical Services LLC and signage from Signature Signs for the Fowlerville EMS base station brought to us by Emergency Medical Services. Is there any second? Second Deaton. I'm hearing a second by uh, Commissioner Deaton. Is there need of further questioning or presentation or analysis or comment by any commissioner. Seeing none, roll call vote kindly. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. And Commissioner Smith. Yes. Motion carries. We're at 12. Subletter L, it's number 2024-07-100. It's a resolution authorizing a contract with Lindhouse Associates for engineering and bidding coordination work on the proposed EMS basis brought to us by Emergency Medical Services, Director Felposh. So move sample. Support Gross. Moved by Commissioner Sample, support by Commissioner Gross. Does any commissioner with further presentation, question, or analysis? Seeing none, a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Sample. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Dreck. Yes. Commissioner Deaton. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Fiani. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Domus. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We're at item number 13 on the agenda. It reads accounts payable reports sub A, claims dated July 22, 2024, and 13B, payables dated June 29 through July 12, 2024. May I have a motion? So move Gross. Support Deaton. Motion by Commissioner Gross, support by Commissioner Deaton. All those in favor of the motion that covers both 13A and B, Kindly voice vote uh, with the uh, word aye. 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 Are there any opposed? 
Hearing none, the voice vote is nine to zero with passage and approval. We're at number 14 on the agenda. It's our second call to the public. This one is approximately two minutes long. And we'll start with any cards that may be I believe I have one in. coming. Mr. Ben Tassich from Genoa Township. Mr. Tassich, when you're seated and comfortable, you may begin. Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Ben Tassich. Uh, I'm from District 6, Genoa Township. 25-year resident of Livingston County and a veteran. Uh, I'm not here this evening for any political messages, but rather to thank you for your tireless service to the county that continues. This county continues to grow and be a community where many enjoy a life of serenity and safety. And I think that you guys have a lot to do with this, and I thank you very much. Don't necessarily agree with you on some of the issues, but I have to respect when a job is well done. I'm here to thank Greg Kellogg, the Director of Transportation, who does so much with so little to keep our buses running, to provide transportation for our employees, and most importantly, to see that Let's continues to grow and expand with a limited, and I mean a limited budget. And finally, I, uh, I asked Hulk Hogan to join us this evening, but he's unavailable. <laughs> he has a piece. He's doing a political rally in, in Maryland right now. So uh, uh, maybe at the next meeting, we can have him here. Thank you. Thanks for that. I have no further cards. That would be the end of cards for the room. Uh, do you see any hands raised on Zoom? I do not, I do not have any, Commissioner. No. There is one. Thumbs up and go. Oh, sorry. Late... We do have a Steve W. I get it. All right. We're on Zoom now for call to the public. Uh, Mr. Williams, you've got two minutes. Oh, Steve Williams, Marion Township, still here. And uh, what I didn't get to continue before is that I, I also, I, it sounds like, sounds like you guys take easy offense, but you know, you're actually paid to sit here and listen to criticism from your employers who include me and all the other taxpayers and registered voters in Livingston County. So I do take a little offense at some of the things that have been levied at these, at these three ladies, all of whom are college graduates, all of whom are extremely conservative you know, my wife went to the most conservative college in the state of Wisconsin and grew up in the thumb and went to Juniata Baptist and grew up there. So if you want to if you want to look it up, you're not going to you're not going to find anybody more conservative. My daughter grew up with me at Cornerstone Evangelical Lutheran or Presbyterian Church, and uh, you're not going to find a more conservative church. It has changed a bit with a, a change of leadership, but it's still very conservative, very pro-life. All these ladies have degrees. All of them have owned at least two homes. So they're very aware of taxes and the impact of taxes and how to manage their finances. They all have great credit ratings. Two of all of them are Second Amendment supporters. Two of them are CPL holders. All of them have family members. Their fathers were all in the military. Their grandfathers were all in the military. They care and they spend time in a lot of different types of causes throughout the community. And unlike five or no, six of the nine commissioners, they actually grew up in small towns. They are not, they are not big city transplants or carpetbaggers as they used to call them after the Civil War. So they're very aware of the ethics and of the values of this community. They're very conservative. They're very- You have 15 seconds remaining. And when I want to support my wife, I will support my wife, Commissioner Nakagari, because that is what we believe in in this county. And that doesn't mean just giving a woman a hand up after knocking her down like your recent guest seems to Mr. believe. Mr. Williams, you cannot address an individual commissioner. Your time is delayed here. You address the chair and that's all. Thank you. Thank you, I'm finished. <laughs> Any further uh, Zoom hands anyone sees? I do not see any, Commissioner. Thank you. 
The chair will exercise its option to be the last to speak. From my research, less than four years ago, my opponent married and moved to Livingston County after less than four years here, having never served on an elected board or as in a government official, she's now decided she has the qualifications to run our entire county. By contrast, I've lived in this county for more than 40 years. I've provided service to many different people in many different ways. During the last 40 years, I've worked the events, I've flipped the pancakes, I've served the spaghetti, I've raised the funds, I've been the treasurer, I've been the secretary, I've been the president, I've been the cleanup crew. I've licked the envelopes, I've taken attendance, I've signed guests in, I've volunteered, I've purchased hundreds of sponsorships, I've eaten thousands of rubber chicken dinners at charity events, and I've bid at their auctions. And as a county commissioner, I watch over taxpayer funds to ensure they're spent wisely and responsibly. My opponent claims this board of commissioners needs a former loan officer with experience in developing budgets according to her latest postcard. My research into our finances shows extreme concern. My research shows a public record of a Detroit federal bankruptcy judge revealing that my opponent confessed under the penalty of perjury to her 100% failure to keep approximately 16 written promises to repay money owed. She broke all 16. The unsecured debt totaled over $358,000. That's 358,000 reasons not to let her anywhere near our county budget or bonds or borrowing. This is not evidence of fiscal responsible individual. I promised taxpayers I would live up to three things in my, that my parents taught me. I spend less than, I, than we earn here. We save for a rainy day. We shun debt. I've kept my promise. Thank you. That brings us to the last part of our agenda. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Which would be a motion to adjourn. I hear Commissioner Deaton has taken the bull by the horns and a second by Commissioner Fiani. Second Commissioner Deaton's motion to adjourn. All those in favor, voice vote, kindly say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nine to zero have it. We're adjourned at 729 p.m. <laughs>